I'm Dr. Carrie Horn, and you are listening to an excerpt from my book, A Soul Aligned, How God Heals His Creations. In this video, we're continuing with a series that I began on um, becoming like a child. So Christ tells us that we must become like a child in order to receive the kingdom of, of heaven, that we must become humble as a child. Um, but we're looking at several uh, characteristics of children and what this what scripture says. And we're also doing an exercise at the end of each reading uh, in order to really, you know, self-evaluate where are we at with this particular trait of a child? And is there anything that we need to clean up? Anything that we need to resolve? Um, any lukewarm attitudes? Any uh, unoccupied spaces within us? So remember the three, ch the three chinks in our spiritual armor <clears throat> that I've discussed in A Soul Aligned are unoccupied, where we're, you know, we we're not occupying ourselves with the spirit of God, lukewarm. So we're choosing the world. We're trying to play with the world and with God and unresolved, meaning, uh, unresolved spaces that create sin. So, you know, a lot of us have childhood trauma and things like that. One of the most common things that happens with childhood trauma is a spirit of fear and, and a spirit of fear is not a small thing. It's a big thing. It wreaks havoc on our minds. It wreaks havoc on our bodies anywhere from, um, you know, male or female issue affecting the male or female, uh, organs, um, and functions, uh, diabetes, um, cortisol levels, stress levels within our body. And we know, you know, just based on observation within, within science, so just observation that stress wreaks havoc on the body and mind. That's a fact. We can't refute that, that we know that stress does that. However, if we know that <clears throat> returning to the word of God that this is a spirit of fear, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, that's a different spirit, then we know where that comes from. And now we have understanding. So this is my beef with science, is that anybody can observe, any monkey can observe. But what science does is they take it to a different level. They take it to a level where they're making deduction, they're making th uh, theories and explanations that have eliminated God, have eliminated the, the, the um, spiritual context with which we're dealing. And so they have no understanding. It's not because understanding is not accessible. It's because they've rejected it. They rejected it when Darwinian evolution came on the scene. They would rather have the work of their hands. And so that is the God that they were handed over to, the false God. But when we understand that fear is a spirit, now we have a solution. Is there a solution in medicine for fear, for anxiety, as they call it, or stress? No. I'll tell you what, that, what, what they do. They give you medications that are addictive, that break down the temple and make you worse. It's a major, major problem. When we understand that it's a spirit of fear, then we can scale back and say, okay, where did this get in? So the example that I'm giving is, you know, during childhood trauma, we don't have the ability to protect ourselves. We don't have the ability to escape situations in which adults who, you know, may have power over us um, and are hurting us, we don't have the ability to protect ourselves from that. And so in the absence of having good shepherds in our lives, which should be in our parents, our parents are being entrusted to be shepherds of us back to God and to teach us the spiritual nature of the war that we're facing here. If we don't have that, <clears throat> we're going to end up with a spirit of fear because it's going to create a chink in our armor and the enemy is going to slither into that. Now, God's going to give us opportunities to seek him. He's going to give us opportunities to heal from it. And he's building our lampstand. God knows what he's doing in these things. We need not lean on our own, own understanding and start saying that, you know, God is just terrible because he allows this stuff to happen. No, man chose to do it. We've been given choice and God is absolutely sovereign and he will use it for 
the purpose for which he set us apart. And guess what? That purpose might might cause us some grief in this life. Well, I shouldn't even say might. It's going to cause us grief in this life. It's going to be painful. But we will inherit eternal life if we turn to God and we allow him to build us for the reason he created us because he has all rights to us. And that means that when we acknowledge that, when we accept that God has purchased us and that he has all rights to us and that he is sovereign, that means that we turn to him, we seek his understanding and we seek his healing and we seek his building of us and we give him all rights to us. He has all rights anyway, but he doesn't force us in this life. So if we're going to fulfill our covenant, we need to give him his rights to us. And we need to set aside our own stuff to receive what God is doing in us. And we need a regular way of doing that each day. In Isaiah 30, 15, God says what? He says, in repentance and rest is your salvation. Not a nap, rest in God. Not an I'm sorry, change, transformation, renewal, conformity to the heart of God. Acknowledgement of the things that we've done and the things that we're continuing to do so that we can actually change. And then he says, in trust and in quietness and trust is your strength. So it's not in the work of our own hands. It's in our trust and our belief in God. This is what is done in the heart. This is the heart that will be justified on the day of the Lord. So we do have things that we need to do. There's actually quite a bit that we need to do in order to be saved. So we've been talking about these different traits of a child and why these traits of a child are important in terms of fulfilling our covenant with God, receiving the kingdom of heaven as a child, becoming like a child, all of these things that God has talked to us about and um, and how to, to self-evaluate. Now, if you're coming into this a little bit later in the series, I would recommend going back and uh, listening to some other videos if you're having difficulty with the assignment portion at the end. Eventually, it's all going to, you know, if you're listening to the videos, eventually you're going to hear enough that you're going to understand how to do the work. But if you, if you struggle with it a little bit, you might want to go back in this series. This video is entitled, Children Are Loyal. Children know to whom they belong, and they are faithful. They do not seek after other parents, but love the parents to whom they belong. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and walked in the ways of David his father. And he did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet a boy, he began to seek the God of David his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the ashram, and the carved and metal images. Second Chronicles 34, 1 through 3. Josiah knew the God to whom he belonged, and he was faithful to his father. He removed false gods from his kingdom because they represented infidelity to God. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. John 5, 21. Even as infants, we recognize and respond to the voices of our parents. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, John 10, 27. The spirit himself bears witness with our, with our spirit that we are children of God, Romans 8, 16. Thus, children cannot be tricked into believing that they belong to a person who is not their parent. Children recognize the parents to whom they belong to the extent that they fear being out of the view and protection of their parents. They instinctively look around to make sure that they are near. They crave the presence and the voices of their parents as comfort and security. They also fear their parents being out of their ability to view. Though we cannot see God with our eyes, our spirit can sense when we have strayed from his presence and when he has hidden himself from us. We are designed for loyalty to God. We are designed not to turn away from him and to remain in his presence and to hear his voice. Take a moment to journal your own questions, bring resolution to any unresolved suffering with which God has put you in touch, 
engage in inner parent and inner child dialogue, and bring yourself to God as his child. So if this is the first time you're listening to this, I want you to um, take some time to do these things independently. It's not like a run-on sentence. Take a moment to journal your own questions. One, bring resolution to any unresolved suffering with which God has put you in touch. Two, engage, excuse me, engage in inner parent and inner child dialogue. Three, and bring yourself to God as his child. So I'm keeping these videos short. Uh, That was number four. I'm keeping these videos short because it's not the video. It's the process by which you're relating with yourself and you're relating with God. So there's a short reading, but then there's the application part. And this application part, you really want to take some time to implement this in your life so that you can know what it is you're doing and, and why this is important. Why does this matter? Thanks so much for listening. If you've enjoyed the video, um, this video, please consider subscribing and also ringing the bell icon and you can receive more videos like this. And um, I've also left some resources within the description box. Uh, there are two links. One is for a solo line from, uh, from which I am reading. Uh, and the other is for Heart Known series, which is uh, the workbook that I wrote in conjunction with a solo line. And um, it is a practical application workbook for biblical healing. Thanks again for listening. God bless.